On behalf of Black Box, brand name owned by Synergy Soft Technology and IT Voice Media, I would like to welcome you all. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Just a little brief about Synersoft and Black Box. Black Box basically empowers your enterprise to achieve the objectives of data loss prevention and data theft prevention from your servers, laptops, desktops, tablets, and mobile phones. Synersoft is one of the very few Indian companies with Indian products which are solely focused on small and medium enterprises of India, who are largest employment generators for Indian economy and largest contributors to Indian GDP. A little about IT Voice Media. IT Voice is an IT media house based out of Jaipur, dedicated in providing quality tech news and promotional services as well. Today, we are presenting on utilizing the full power of cloud through black box, one cloud, one, one, one service, one agent, presented by Mr. Vishal Shaha, co-founder and CEO of Synersoft Technologies. I would also like to welcome and introduce Mr. Sudhir Chaube. Mr. Sudhir Chaube, co-founder of Synersoft, is also there in the panel. He looks after the commercial aspect of the organization. All the attendees will receive a digital certificate after the webinar. You can use the same to claim your discount offer on Blackbox One Cloud. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box in your panel. I'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have time for questions at the end. Now, without further ado, I will turn over the time to Mr. Vishal, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Shrushti, and good afternoon to all. Uh, I see very good uh, uh, attendance and thank you for your interest. Uh, thank you, IT Voice, for having me here. And uh, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, continue this demonstration in a very interactive way. So we are going to have many polls also. So let me share my screen first uh, so that uh, we can start the demonstration. Yeah, so uh, today in next one hour, we have planned this demonstration on Blackbox One Cloud, which is a new product launched by Synersoft. Uh, we all know Synersoft for its Blackbox on-premise, all-in-one IT in a box kind of solution for MSMEs. Uh, we have started this uh, a particular business in 2008. And since then we have been on on-premise uh, uh, business majorly. Now we have uh, launched this product, which is Blackbox One Cloud, understanding the needs of the businesses to work remotely as well as to work on cloud. So this is our uh, product, our own product, which we now name is as Blackbox One Cloud, and we will understand why, why it is named as Blackbox One Cloud. Uh, for those who uh, uh, do not know about uh, Synersoft, I will uh, take some time to just introduce uh, Synersoft very briefly. We started in 2008. We are almost 15 years old. Uh, we are seed funded by government of India uh, in its uh, Indian technology promotion scheme. Uh, we are incubated by CII, Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. They are our board of governors. Uh, we have uh, bagged many prestigious awards and recognition, and uh, you can check those awards on our website in awards section. Uh, Synersoft owns numerous patents for its technologies, especially in the field of autocratic centralization, in the field of uh, data isolation uh, during the internet uh, uh, session, and many more. Uh, we are a time-tested and proven technology. This Blackbox One Cloud is completely based on uh, Blackbox uh, technology, and it is a time-tested and proven technology. Currently, we have 10,000 plus deployments uh, majorly in India and across uh, UAE, US, and UK. 
uh, we have 90% plus retention rate. Uh, people renew our subscription and they are 90% plus. So this is about Synersoft. And uh, before we move to um, the agenda of uh, today, I would request uh, my colleague to you know, launch a poll in order to understand the profiles of the uh, people who are uh, attending this webinar. It will be very helpful to me uh, on um, how much technical I will speak about and how much layman I would speak about. So uh, kindly help us with uh, your inputs to these polls. So as we uh, see the results uh, on the poll, uh, we have 45% uh, of the people who are owner or custodian of enterprise data. 27% of the people are IT professionals managing SME IT infrastructure. And 27% are system integrators or IT consultants. So I think we have a good balance of enterprise owners, IT professionals, and IT entrepreneurs. Um, the next question says that 32% of the people are uh, uh, currently providing or using any cloud solution for their clients. And 68% of the people are not using any cloud solutions for themselves or for their clients. And 50% uh, of the people uh, think that financial budget is the major challenge when we want to plan cloud for our for the MSME clients. And 50% are uh, you know believing that you know it's more challenging. Usability of the software is more challenging uh, when we plan a cloud computing adoption for MSMEs. These are very important and insightful inputs, and uh, we will shape our next uh, interaction accordingly. So now, uh, before we start with the product, uh, let us set the expectations from an ideal cloud product. So expectation from ideal cloud product would be by visualizing what an MSME would require when they want to bring their business to cloud. And when they bring their business to cloud, what they require, uh, we can discuss that, we can understand that. And then we can demonstrate a product after convincing ourselves that in an ideal cloud product, this kind of features or this kind of modules should be there. And accordingly, when we see the demonstration, we can compare it with an ideal requirement and then we can understand how good or bad this product could be or how fitting or misfitting the product could be with MSME. So before we start, let me uh, start with this uh, uh, definition or visualizing, you know, uh, uh, ideal product for MSMEs. So when we want to bring the business to the cloud, first thing any enterprise would require is enterprise wide cloud workspace. Why we are emphasizing on enterprise wide cloud workspace, you know, most of the consumer oriented cloud service providers offer per user per year kind of uh, uh, charges and uh, per user storage space. So like in uh, G Suite or Google Workspace now, uh, basic or maybe business starter, you get 30 GB per user. So here uh, we are talking about enterprise wide space. So many a times what happens that some users don't use the space allocated to them and many users require more space than the space allocated to them. Here, when it is enterprise-wide uh, cloud workspace, 
it is like uh, all users can use whatever is available to the enterprise it is just like uh, in in one cricket ground there are so many uh, a net uh, net setup where in each net people can play then their uh, area of playground is only uh, restricted to that net but if that entire ground is available for the people to play then it is an enterprise wide cloud workspace so uh, any ideal cloud I, I system should have enterprise wide cloud workspace instead of uh, user wise uh, cloud workspace then second uh, desired feature would be automatic data backup and data recovery after ransomware attack many a times uh, we look forward to the cloud storage you know in order to uh, back up our data as well as recover our, our data especially after the ransomware attack then um, we also look at the cloud uh, we want to save our data cloud which is obviously off premise uh, for data recovery after disaster or asset loss so this is another desired feature then we also want it policy enforcement uh, when we are working in the office environment under a domain uh, we can enforce all the policies but when users are working from different geographic places different remote places um, they may not be under the standard IT policy enforcement of the enterprise and it is desired that when organization brings itself to cloud it's all enterprise policies should be enforceable so that is another desired feature then we also would like to see that there is data recovery after accidental or intentional deletion when the cloud uh, storage or cloud workspace is being shared by so many users if some user deletes the data uh, organization should be able to retrieve that because it would otherwise if affect its business continuity then we also want that our emails are backed up there is proper vigilance on the emails and there are policies applied on the emails. So this is another desired feature when um, enterprise wants to um, uh, move itself to the cloud. Then uh, we also want zero trust internet access control, which we can very well do in our office environment through our firewall. But when users are working on home um, environment or uh, home internet Wi-Fi or airport internet Wi-Fi or whatever, uh, we require that uh, they should access internet because uh, when we want to bring our business on cloud at the same time, we want them not to misuse internet to leak our data. So that is also uh, a desired feature. Then a uh, dual profile for BOL, BO, BYOD environment, bring your own device. Many MSMEs cannot afford to give computers to their users. So they rely on their users to use their own computers. And in that case, uh, they need to allow them to uh, work on that computer for personal purpose also. At that time, they are also worried about um, their data security. So there has to be a dual profiling system on the cloud computing where uh, in personal profile, enterprise data is not accessible. And in enterprise profile, personal data is not accessible and enterprise policies are enforced. Then uh, we require remote application access also. Um, data is or file data is not the only thing users use. Uh, users also use enterprise applications like Tally, SAP, uh, some homegrown ERP application. So we need that uh, there should be uh, remote access to those applications in secured way. So we also uh, look up to the cloud for application virtualization or hardware virtualization also. Then uh, we also would like to monitor the productivity. When people are on cloud, they may not be necessarily in the office and what they are doing, how much productive are they? We would be interested or as an enterprise, it, um, enterprise would be interested in knowing all that. So whatever cloud computing um, is adopted, it should also indicate the productivity or it should enable the enterprise to monitor the productivity. So these are the ideal things, you know, uh, which are required um, in any cloud service. When organization wants to bring itself or uh, bring its IT to the cloud, it requires all these features to make sure that its data is not lost, leaked, 
or stolen its users are productive and all its enterprise policies are enforced on the users no matter users are uh, remotely working no matter users are using their personal computers or uh, personal devices so this is an ideal thing you know so before we move to black box one cloud we have set the expectations that if we are looking at any cloud product or combination of cloud products uh, it should minimum contain these many features so that um entire business it can be taken on the cloud yeah prasanna can we uh, uh, uh can we start the poll just we would like to take the feedback from everyone that whether uh they are aware about all these features and for every feature are they using any kind of solutions or not So as we uh, see the results on the poll, um, I appreciate your patience to go through this very, very long poll with seven questions, but it is going to help us understand uh, this technology better. So um, we, uh, we see that 61% uh, of the uh, attendees, you know, they prefer um, Google Workspace as a um pool storage uh eight eleven percent for onedrive then fourteen percent for dropbox and fourteen percent are uh, preferring you know on premise file server accessible on static ip so in any case uh, for uh, having a cloud workspace uh, we need to install the agent of google drive or onedrive of course is built in in the uh, windows as well as dropbox you also you have to install the agent so for accessing the workspace and collaborating on the workspace, uh, we have to install the agents like Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox. Then um, we see that 21% of the people depend or prefer to depend on Druva for their backup. 
uh, 36% on Acronis for their backup, 18% on Symantec for their backup, and AWS S3, 25%. So here again, we need to install some agent like Drua or Acronis or Symantec to take the backup of the computer systems or the server. So one more agent is also installed. Then we see that 25% uh, of the people are depending on Active Directory and Domain Controller for enforcing their IT policy in the organization. 21% AD on Azure. 21% uh, on Symantec and 32% on Endpoint Protector. So these, again, we have to install the agent um, for Endpoint Protector or Symantec in order to enforce the policy. So this is the third agent we need to install in case we also want this particular IT enforcement happening. Then uh, we see that 11% of the uh, people use Symantec DLP for email vigilance against data leakage. Uh, then 18% use Securite DLP uh, for the same purpose. Then 36% of the people use intermediate mail distribution server or 36% um, of the people uh, set up the email rules, email delivery rules on the email host. So uh, when, when they use DLP, uh, they need to use uh, uh, one agent, you know, in order to do that uh, DLP work. So one more agent has to be installed for vigiling the emails. Then um, we have to understand that uh, how people or remote users can be controlled for the internet data leakage. They may not be in the firewall all the time. So 25% uh, of the people again use DLP agent. 39% um, of the people use antivirus, which also has an agent to install. Uh, I mean, 29% of the people do not control, or I would say cannot control. And 7% are using device hardening and VPN for controlling the internet. So again, in order to control the internet, we are installing one more agent. Then how uh, people are hardening for BYOD. I mean, they need to harden the computer systems of the user, which belongs to the users for IT enforcement. So 18% uh, they have to ask the users to follow the moral values. Then 29% of the people, you know, they ask to save enterprise data in one folder and then they configure it for the backup. Again, it is very democratic or voluntary. 43% <clears throat> of the people use DLP agent uh, for uh, enforcement of policy on the user's computer. And 11% of the people uh, cannot install it because users don't agree because they need to use the computer for the per personal purpose. So again, if we want to control the personal computer, again, we have to install the agent. Then 29% uh, of the people use VPN for uh, accessing the applications remotely. 25% of the people prefer remote desktop. 39% uh, of the people prefer TeamViewer or AnyDesk and 7% on Citrix. In all these cases, again, you have to install some agent, you know, VPN agent or RDP agent or maybe TeamViewer client or maybe Citrix client or maybe in the browser you have to do this, but it will have very limited uh, functionalities. So what we have understood is that in order to, uh, in order to achieve all these features in a cloud computing system, we have to install multiple agents. We have to subscribe to multiple services. And for an MSME, let's take an example of an MSME who has 25 users, and he is required to install seven different agents in his computers, or he's required to manage seven different cloud services, you know, uh, service providers for different purpose. It is too complex for uh, such an MSME. And of course, we know the pricing of all these solutions and it is also an un unaffordable. And that has actually motivated us to develop a product for MSMEs, which can help them bring their business to the cloud. And now we will see how, how it works. So what is black box? So the first thing which we have designed is that because an MSME uh, cannot uh, take the complexity of multiple agents installed and multiple cloud services, we have a one agent system. And that same agent does device hardening, as well as uh, 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 it will also have force centralization. It will also do the work of backup. Uh, it, uh, of course, recovery also. 
it will also give a feature of a remote application access it will also become vpn client and it will also become an endpoint control so this one agent will do multiple things so msme has to only uh, deal with single agent it does not have to install so many uh, agents in uh, so many computers then another is uh, one cloud console means that on the server side everything is done in a single uh, in a single uh, interface so all these agents uh, actually are configured through single cloud console for device hardening policy services for vpn services for file services for email vigilance services for endpoint control services and for proxy services so this is about uh, a single server and then single cloud storage so um, I mean, when we talk about a traditional cloud storage, you get cloud storage for files, you get cloud storage for your mailbox, you, you get cloud storage for your SQL database. Here, all those boundaries are removed. You know, you have single cloud storage. If you buy four terabyte, you can use it for your emails, you can use it for your files, you can use it for your application data, you can use it for everything. And you can also use it for backup of your data. So many a times uh, we store the data and then we want to use cloud services for backing up also. So this entire single cloud storage can be used for whatever purpose you want. So the concept of black box one cloud is, um, you know, getting rid of complexities of having so many agents, having so many um, um, different cloud service providers, dashboards, and uh, having compartmentalization of, you know, having email box space and having application SQL space or having, um, you know, uh, file space. So all we are getting rid of it and it is one agent, one service and one cloud. It does everything. Uh, it achieves all these features. Now we'll see it one by one. So uh, let us uh, understand now how, how it works. And before that, I will ask one single question just to get your feedback. And then we will start with the product demonstration. Prasanna, can we start the poll, please? So if we look at it, I think 83% of the people agree that it makes sense to have a single cloud and single cloud agent and single cloud service. So now we will see the product. So let me explain what the product is about and uh, I will move to the next slide. So first we will understand what do we mean by cloud workspace. As I told, it is an enterprise wide cloud workspace and we have designed this product to resemble our legacy product which is black box on premise so everything looks same but everything works on cloud it is to make sure that uh, whoever knows black box whoever has used the black box can easily use this particular product there is no learning curve so first of all we will see the cloud workspace and what is there in the cloud workspace we will see uh, so we will show you how this cloud workspace can be managed, you know, uh, it is absolutely a file server online and you can have permission engine, uh, you can have user allocation, you can have primary chamber and hidden chamber, which I will explain. And uh, it will also have a complete backup solution. You can have versioning of the backup. You can have reporting on the backup. You can see which type of data or which particular folder of the data you want have more versions or less versions. 
everything you can uh, do it as per your it strategy so this entire cloud service is let's say for example it has different sizes of the enterprises it serves so let's say 12 user gets 4 terabyte of the space in which two usable and two for backup similarly 20 users uh, get 8 terabyte of the space on the cloud uh, in totality similarly uh, it goes from uh, 4 terabyte 8 terabyte 16 terabyte 32 terabyte 64 terabyte of the space and that space belongs to the enterprise and how you manage that play, uh, space we will see that so i request uh, my technical team to uh, basically uh, connect to uh, the file permission engine first So uh, once the four terabyte or whatever terabytes are allocated, uh, we will see how you can have, a, a, you know, you can set the users and permissions. Yeah, please log in. It is in the uh, browser. So this entire cloud storage space is divided in two chambers. One is primary chamber, another is hidden chamber. Primary chamber and hidden chamber are disconnected from each other and primary chamber transfers the data to the hidden chamber at a specific time and at that time it uh, uh, follows the dc dc protocol of the black box so that you know um, and in hidden chamber the versions of your data are stored as per your specification so here uh, let's say this entire workspace is user data where you can have in that workspace you can have folders for your department for your individual users and then you can define the permissions on those uh, users also. So let's say if it is an account executive and we want to set the permission for him, then on that account executive user, only account executive can work. Uh, similarly, if it is a department, uh, you can have multiple users sharing that particular department. Can we open some permission for the department, please? So let's say this is an account department or taxation department and we see what permissions. Then we can see how many users can access this and how many people are there in the group and we can set up. So you can have department folders, shared folders on the cloud in which multiple users belonging to that particular department can work as well as you can have individual users folders on the cloud and uh, it is also uh, possible. So uh, this is something which is uh, uh, very, very useful and you can have complete file services. And on the console, you can manage uh, multiple, um, um, uh, multiple backup jobs. So can we uh, go to the uh, console, please? So this is a black box service console which takes care of so many things in one single console and the agent is uh, doing so many things. So we can go to the backup part. So here, uh, whatever uh, uh, folders, files you have created on your cloud, you can define the backup jobs for them. So let's say if you want that your accounts department folder should be version for 20 days, then it will be version for 20 days or 15 days. If you want that the incremental backup should happen for your design department, then incremental backup will happen for design department. If you want that um, certain data should be backed up on the cloud, another cloud you have taken, uh, maybe for your redundancy purpose, you can also do the same. So uh, this is this is a very simple uh, backup setup where uh, you can uh, set up the backup at a very granular level. Uh, you want that accounts team should be uh, versioned for 15 times and sales team should be versioned for three times. Uh, you can very well do that. So this is how, and you can also set up the reports. And once the backup happens, you get the report on the email and you can also have a complete uh, dashboard to see the reports. So here uh, we can set up the email system and uh, configure the report or we can log on to the dashboard and uh, check the reports. Can we go to the reports, please? So here you have so many uh, reports. So let's go to DCDR. So it could be the reports of your backup of your laptop users, individual hard drive, as well as of your data on the cloud. We can see all those reports, its status, 
and we would be the first to know uh, the problem you know so let's say here you see there are six, uh, 18 success uh, there is zero error and if we uh, go to some uh, um, computer system let's say go to ravindra please it is his laptop where there are 2000 uh, uh, 211 files are there the data is 679 mb and last uh, backup happened on um, 23rd August, uh, what it is? Yeah, last update was 23rd August. And after that, he might not have access these uh, computer system or data might not have changed. So this is something which we can uh, uh, very well understand. So when we talk about a cloud workspace, let's say it is a four terabyte or 32 terabyte of the space, you can manage it yourself. You can create the users, you can create the departments, and you can um, make sure that whatever backup uh, strategy you want to adopt, you can adopt. Yeah, can you please give back the screen to me? Then we have uh, another module, which we will now see. That is IT policy enforcement. This is very important. And most of the times, uh, even if we take some cloud space uh, like Amazon or something, we need to have something to enforce the policy. So what we will see in this particular IT policy enforcement is device hardening. So where all your computer systems, uh, which are, um, uh, which are uh, to be taken on the cloud computing, you know, we would like to have certain uh, rules and restrictions for them. So what this device hardening does is as soon as that a particular agent is installed, you can configure whether that particular user will have admin rights or not, or it can withdraw the admin rights. You can also uh, configure the USB controls. You can also configure the application controls. Like on his computer, he can use only Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Tally. Then he cannot use the computer for any other purpose. Then there is a blind VPN. We'll see what we blind VPN. But yes, uh, from the console itself, we can enter the credentials of the VPN, server address of the VPN, and then VPN will be connected automatically. The agent will connect the VPN automatically without asking for the credentials. Then you have drive allocation. So let's say you have one user in accounts department. And that particular user is supposed to use certain number of folders of department wise or user wise, then you can allocate those folders which you have created in that file server. And those folders can be uh, mounted automatically in that particular users. We'll see how it works. Then uh, we have local secure drive for offline access. All the time user may not be connected to internet and he can work on cloud. He would like to work offline also. So we can also have a specific local secured uh, folder uh, so that user can work on cloud as well as on a secured folder while he is offline. So that is also done by the agent. That is also created by the agent. And then we force the user to work only in that particular offline folder or on the cloud. So user cannot scatter your data across entire hard drive and you don't have to scan entire hard drive just for the backup purpose or anything else. So, and another uh, um, a, a point we will see in, in next uh, demo session would be uh, secured access to cloud drives. So, um, it will auto mount the cloud drives. We will see how it works and uh, we will have uh, access of cloud drive through the browser and they will be logged device wise. So most of the uh, uh, you know enterprises face a problem that when the cloud drive is accessible, it is accessible from anywhere and there is a big data leakage problem. So here if you define that this particular user's cloud drive should be accessed from a specific computer or a group of computers, then uh, it can be accessed only from those computers. So now we will see how it is configured. Then we will log on to a computer system and we'll see its effect. So I request uh, my colleague to connect to the console first, where we will see how these uh, policies are uh, created. So, uh, uh, and this works on Windows. Uh, so you can create the users here. And wherever the agent is installed, all those computer systems will start displaying over here. Now, let's say you want that an account executive user or account manager user has to work on specific number of computers. Then you can select the computer systems like this. 
so he can work only on these computer systems he cannot access your cloud from any other computer system which is a very good data leakage prevention strategy then you can define that whether this user will be the administrator when he logs in or not so here you can tick mark or untick mark then you can define that whether this user has to work only on the cloud and the secured folder or he can work on any other drives of his computer mostly we do not allow uh, we uh, configure this local resource is blocked and so that user has to compulsorily work either on cloud or the offline folder provided to him so that will minimize the scatteredness of the data then we can define whether this user will uh, be subject to internet restrictions or not so here we can define the proxy settings also then we can define uh, whether this user will have a usb access or not and on that usb access you can define uh, that you know a user can can access only keyboard mouse kind of non mass storage device in that case we'll select both the options as block and block then you want that user can access digital signatures or hasp dongles for license authentication or you want user to access an inward only kind of camera access like they have some photograph and they want to copy it to the enterprise network in that case we can allow the read allow and write block in that case what will happen user can only invert the data from usb port he cannot outward the data from us through usb port and in case you want some users to access usb port even to outward the data uh, it will uh, uh, enable the report tab and you can define who will receive the report so as soon as those users who are access who are given access to the usb port for outwarding the data they can very well uh, be reported you know so if they are taking some files there will be an evidence it will be reported to the supervisor so uh, this is about uh, you know certain parts of device hardening then we can define which applications this user can access so here uh, let's say we select whatever number of computers on that computer whatever applications are installed will be populated over here and you can select on that computer which application the user can access so let's say if we want the user can access only mozilla word excel or only chrome word excel tally sap whatever uh, you can select and only those things will be accessible to the user similarly we can define if the user is accessing the cloud what will be his folders accessible so here you can define that this user can access let's say downloads personal common accounts these are department folders and personal is his personal folder so uh, this is something where you can define what folders this particular user can access when he is on the cloud and uh, we can also define uh, what vpn credentials will be used by the user so user does not have to remember username password server address he has to we do we don't have to manually configure the vpn client on user's computer you can just feed in all those details over here and it will work uh somewhere else so we will see now how how it works so here what we have seen is that we have hardened the user's device we have also mapped the computer systems with number of users so one user can access number of computers one user can access single system only or multiple users can access one computer so any possibility you can define now we will connect to an user uh, on cloud account manager user on cloud and then we will see how it works so we will take the connection of a user's computer system now and we'll see how all these policies are enforced on him so now let us first verify whether black box agent is installed or not this is only one agent which does all these things yes it is installed now we will see whether user is the admin or not we have already withdrawn the admin rights from the user this user could be anywhere in the world you know uh, his admin rights won't work because it is agent based and everything is configured on your cloud console we see here that there are no admin rights now we'll go to the my pc of the user so here if you see you don't see the c drive d drive anything because we have already withdrawn the access to a local user there is no ad Uh, on uh, azure there is no uh, domain controller it is all in peer to peer network uh, it is all through our cloud agent so if you see here you can see his offline folder also this professional am is his offline folder so while he is not connected to internet he can access this folder in case he wants to access the cloud drive he can connect to the black box icon 
right click on that then you can see this cloud drive so you can click on that cloud drive now just understand now when he clicks on that cloud drive only the folders which are accessible to him will be will be available to him so as you have seen that in the console we had made certain folders accessible and so those certain folders were accounts uh, uh, taxation whatever so only those folders are accessible here and these folders are accessible in a very folder structure manner user uh, can very well use it just like he is using windows there is nothing like he has to learn anything how to use this cloud drive so these cloud drives are accessible these cloud drives are accessible as per the policy this computer system is hardened to make the policy work on that and uh, these particular users don't have to remember their vpn or anything they just get access to this particular cloud drives so this is how it works uh, user cannot scatter the data also uh, anywhere else because he has to work in this drive either in the cloud drives or on the local folder which is provided to them and the backup of the local folder will also be taken and which we have seen in the dashboard so in case user has downloaded anything uh, in that particular secured folder that will be automatically backed up user will not have any say in that user cannot stop or uh, do anything with the backup yeah uh, so this is about device hardening and accessing how cloud drives are accessed now we will move to the next part of the demonstration can you please give back the screen to me So we have seen uh, how IT policy enforcement hardening happens when user is working on the cloud. Then um, uh, we would be concerned about what if user deletes the data from the cloud drive, how do we recover it? So um, uh, user, we have to see that user deletes anything, then it remains on the cloud and then uh, admin can, uh, by his or her discretion can actually um, restore the data or purge the data from the so on this particular cloud the same active recycle bin technology of black box is also uh, implemented so here uh, what we have done is this active recycle bin will capture the data uh, which is deleted by the user on the cloud and then you can have access to that particular recycle bin as an admin through your browser and in case you want to restore it we can very well restore it so this is how uh, this particular cloud thing uh, will help you in making sure that you do not lose your business continuity because of accidental or intentional deletion of the data now intentional deletion of the data is very interesting if user deletes the data intentionally then uh, we have two things to know one uh, whether we can recover it or not which we can very well recover using active recycle bin two whether uh, we we can find out who has deleted the data because if it is an intentional deletion we would know we would like to know who is trying to do or play such mischief so here in your black box cloud all file operations are logged and you can actually load those file operation logs and you can find out who has deleted the data at what time of the day on which date and it would serve as an evidence also so this is something which is very very uh, interesting um, we will see that on on the cloud um, and before that i would also uh, tell you that how black box works on vigiling the emails so uh, you can also vigil the emails user might be working on the email client like outlook or thunderbird or user might be working on the browser then black box will have its own um, webmail service also and we will see how we can uh, define the policies um, on the email when we uh, log on next it will also shadow all the emails so whatever emails are being used by the user it will shadow those emails so in case user deletes his emails or his uh, the email client gets corrupt or whatever happens um, you can actually recover the data and it will also it is a very interesting application let's say you have 32 terabyte among your 100 users you can use those 32 terabyte for your users mailbox also so you don't have to pay so much uh, to googles and microsoft you know you can take 30 gb box and then store all the emails archive all the emails on the black box cloud and you can save good money we will see how 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 it works then what we are going to see is zero trust uh, internet controls 
um, where we can define that user can access which websites. And when user wants to access any websites which are not allowed by the enterprise, how can how he can uh, enter an email? Uh, sorry, how can enter he can in, enter an internet uh, session which is not restricted? And how the data security happens? And then we will also see the productivity monitoring. How we how will we monitor the productivity? So now we will see these three things uh, on the console. Uh, yeah, Rajendra, can we go to the uh, active recycle bin first? So go to the user, delete the data. So now we will delete the data from a user's computer from a cloud drive. So the um, agent is installed and you have so many cloud drives already loaded. Now you can uh, click on uh, any of the department drive where so many users are working. Just shift delete everything. Shift delete means nothing is saved on the local recycle bin. It is shift deleted, deleted. Now it is deleted. Now how you recover it? Very simple, go to your cloud console. There is an active recycle bin user, which is not accessible to normal users. It is only accessible to the admin. And then, you'll find the recycle bin icon. You'll find the recycle bin icon. We'll go to department accounts where the data is deleted. We can just see, uh, select all that data which was deleted, cut it, and then paste it back in that account department data. That's it, in no time, less than one minute, we can recover the data. Now we want to know who has deleted the data. Then you can go to the console where all file operations are logged. You can select the event as delete. We can select from which folder or department it was deleted. And then you can see here that uh, at uh, 1553, uh, certain files were deleted by user accounts executive and what time. And you can also export it to the Excel. So you can recover the data. You can also monitor who has deleted the data. Now we'll quickly go to the email policy. So uh, this particular cloud distribution server can fetch the emails from your G Suite or from O365 or from GoDaddy. And then you can define as many rules as you want. So uh, we can go to the options of the rules go to the policy. So here you can see that uh, whether user can send only emails in your domain or multiple domains, or you can send emails to whitelisted parties, or you cannot send emails to blacklisted parties, or you can send emails, but it will go to the recipient only if it is moderated, uh, it is allowed or approved by the moderator. Or you can make sure that they can send emails, um, but the copy will be received by the supervisor or they cannot send certain attachments or they cannot send certain size of the attachment. So all these things you can control here. And the best part is you can use this workspace for hosting your mailboxes also. And you can access the emails on internet through browser as well as through the email client on uh, IMAP or POP3 protocol, or you can also access it on the web mail. Now we will see how uh, we can define the internet access for the users. So here you can define the list of the websites, you know, which are accessible to the users. So while they are working on cloud, they will have only these many websites like HDFC, SBI, all these websites will be there. And rest of the websites won't be allowed, but it is not practically possible. Uh, so we'll see what could be the problem in doing this and how we can solve this. So we'll quickly connect to the user's computer system. And we will uh, connect to the browser. Open hdfcbank.com. Try to open dropbox.com. It will not open. 
but it is not uh, always necessary that dropbox should not be open let's say a customer has called the user ki please download the thing i have uploaded it on a dropbox uh, in that case user will require to access dropbox right but he cannot go to uh, his it manager all the time call him uh, any point of time and ask where please allow me the dropbox and it manager would not be uh, so inclined to allow dropbox to him because he fears that data can be leaked on dropbox so in this case we have given an on demand internet system to the user so let's say user has to access something which is not allowed to him on internet for research for business development whatever he can go to black box right click on that and he can click on happy hours so as soon as the happy hours are connected user can access everything you can see this now open dropbox now so now dropbox is opening now let us see whether he has access to his cloud drives or local drives or not please go to uh, the this pc of the user he does not have access to any all the cloud drives so all the cloud drives are unmounted now all the cloud drives are unmounted so user can only download anything from the dropbox he cannot upload anything from the cloud drives or from his local uh, folder offline folder uh, to leak the data and after he is done with his downloading uh, he can again exit the happy hours please exit and now see uh, dropbox is not accessible because he is now out of happy hours not accessible now let's see whether those cloud drives are mounted or not they are mounted along with the download folder so you can now the whatever user has downloaded he can use it for his professional work at the same time he was not able to upload anything from his uh, professional data because at that time when he had unlimited access to the internet uh, the cloud drives were unmounted automatically now we will see the remote access part you know we have seen all everything about data email now we will see about the application so let's say black box also offers application virtualization so users can also access you can host your application servers on black box cloud as well as you can um, have your black box uh, your servers in premise or accessible on on static ip and access through black box agent so we'll now log into a computer system um, uh, and see in that we have got something called which is additional which is black box triple a access application anywhere let's say we double click on that so this is a user's computer system and he is trying to access tally remotely so you can double click on that so the tally application will be virtualized and it will be loaded on his desktop or laptop and he can access it here he can also access it on the browser also so blackbox cloud can host your applications blackbox cloud can um, you know virtualize your applications and it will be a one stop solution you don't have to then subscribe to a remote desktop server or you don't have to subscribe to sistry tricks it will be there of course there are different levels of blackbox cloud one uh, one level is uh, whatever file data you have seen another level is you can combine it with triple a access also so this is something where you can also access it in the browser so here we are you are accessing the tally in the browser so it is also inbuilt in the black box agent itself so you can have everything uh, uh, under one umbrella now the we will move to the last part which is uh, uh, which is productivity monitoring um, see whenever your users yeah can we go to the pbo please so whenever a user is working on your cloud you would like to know what he is doing then then the agent will take the screenshot and uploading on the cloud and then we can see that uh, we can replay those screenshots and we can retain those screenshots for number of days 30 days 60 days whatever so let's say today we have worked on few users so we will connect to their screenshots 3 to 4 so here uh, just go to that delete part blue yeah so here the user had i think uh, selected the 
files for deletion. So that screenshot is captured. So, uh, and this is automatically uploaded on the cloud and you can play back on the cloud. So this is about the productivity monitoring. Uh, can you give back the screen to me, please? Yeah, so now uh, I will summarize and then we will move to the question answer session. Uh, so what we have seen in this is we have seen zero trust internet access control means when the user has full access to internet, your data is not available. We have seen the productivity monitoring also. We have seen the remote application access also, okay. So what we have seen is, uh, and also we have uh, understood the dual profiling. So this agent can also give you dual profiling. So one is personal in which no policy is implemented. Another is professional in which all the policies are implemented on enterprise data, VPN, remote access, everything happens from that particular uh, enterprise login only. So that is also possible. And you can have an add-on application virtualization for uh, how to avoid remote desktop. It is very bandwidth frugal. It is fast, secured, and you can also bind the device. You know, in remote desktop, you may not be able to bind the device. Here, you can bind the device that, okay, this user can work on this computer and on, from this computer, you can access this application. Only. So this is about, uh, uh, you know, the entire black box one cloud. And this one single agent, one single uh, client agent, one single cloud service and one single workspace, you know, does everything, you know, it offers storage space, it enforces the policy, uh, it gives you complete file server on the cloud, uh, you can have data recovery from accidental or intentional deletion or maybe disaster or maybe after ransomware attack because of their, I've explained primary chamber and hidden chamber. So hidden chamber is never accessible on the cloud. It can be accessed only by a spatial user. And that's how you can access it in case your data is lost in the ransomware attack. Then you have cloud backup and it's reporting. Then you have prevention of data leakage over USB. I have shown how you can control the USB. You can also prevent data leakage without any DLP client uh, from email also by having email policy. You can prevent data leakage on internet through that zero trust uh, happy hours on demand internet policy. You can have BYOD provisions so that you know users can use their personal computer without compromising with your enterprise data integrity. Then you have remote application access also, and you can also have productivity monitoring. So this is all about this black box one cloud. And uh, I would uh, request all of you to just uh, give your inputs on the last poll of the day, and then we will move to the question answers. Uh, please don't answer question two. I think it is not clear. It is er added by the error.
so as we see uh, automatic backup and versioning is uh, uh, liked by 28% of the people 21% of the people like uh, one clouds workspace with access permission engine 28% of the people were appealed by instant recovery of deleted data 7% are uh, one screen uh, device hardening and 10% email vigilance and backup so basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, we had given only one choice to select. Otherwise, people would have selected more choices that would be more uh, better uh, way of presenting it. So I think uh, we are done with our demonstration and we can very well uh, take up the question answers. Yeah, Shirushti. Uh, yeah, I think we do have few questions. Uh, so let's go ahead with a few of the questions. Uh, so Mr. Sanjeev Singh asks, how does cloud manage to give you the computing performance that you need? Long term monthly subscription could be expensive, we think. Yeah, so it's a very good question, uh, Mr. Singh. So for us, uh, it is not uh, about per user per year kind of model. It is about per enterprise per year model. So let's say if you are 20, uh, uh, 20 users or 100 users, um, uh, we give you certain cloud storage as an enterprise and uh, computing performance is always optimized at our end for your file data, for your email data. And for your application hosting, of course, uh, you can host your servers as per your application's requirements, basically, on computing performance. Uh, and uh, if you compare the pricing of uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, solution, uh, it is very, very cost effective. And uh, if you try to, uh, uh, you know, set a trade-off between, uh, you know, if you have your on-premise hardware and then you use it for five years and phase it out, whatever expense you are going to incur, almost the same expense you are going to incur for our cloud services. And I'll give you an example uh, for uh, a 12 user small organization uh, that costs around 5,000 rupees per month, 5,000 rupees per month for entire organization of 12 users with four terabyte of the space. So it is very cost effectively, uh, uh, it is very cost effectively done actually. I hope I could answer this question. Yeah, uh, we can move to uh, another question, Sushti. You're on mute, Sushti. Uh, Sushti, you are on mute. My bad. Yeah. So the next question, uh, Mr. Vikas Acharya asks, can we see the list of black box features in comparative format? That is comparative between different models of black box, which is the complete feature loaded model. Uh, yeah, Mr. Acharya, you can very well uh, do that. We have a data sheet, but let me tell you from all the models of the black box, you have same features. You know, we uh, only the size of the black box or workspace size of the cloud storage, it differs, you know. So let's say, for example, it's a 12 user model or if it is a 100 user model, uh, the only difference is how much space you uh, get in that. Rest, everything is same for all the users. Features are same and we uh, optimize the performance based on the usage. Um, in the background. Yeah, Shristi. Uh, Mr. Shrikant asks, for how long Blackbox provides training services for Blackbox One Cloud? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm not able to see that question. Where is it? Uh, Shrikant, sir, asks, for how long Blackbox provides training services for Blackbox One Cloud? Uh, we have a program called black box certified security professional and it is conducted at four levels level one level two level three and black belt so uh, all these courses are professionally uh, uh, conducted most of the times we offer complementary course to our customers 
So yes, you can take such complimentary uh, course as a customer of the Black Box, or you can enroll and you can uh, take the training. So Black Box Academy is uh, a self-sustained uh, independent organization which does the training. Uh, so next question, Mr. Umesh asks, can you describe have one agent for all functionalities instead of having multiple software? Yeah, so uh, see one agent for multiple functionality is useful because you don't have to manage so many agents. You know, many a times there are uh, conflicts uh, at the software level, at the OS level. Here you have to manage only one software. And these agents can be configured only from single console. Let's say you have multiple agents. You have an agent of the Dropbox for taking the backup and providing collaborative uh, folder structure to their users. And then you have another uh, agent uh, to maybe control your USB drive. Then you are managing two agents. Then you have two different dashboards to uh, configure those two agents. So it is very complicated. And again, it is complicated it, as well as it is expensive also because you are uh, dealing with multiple, com uh, multiple companies, you are also paying more. Uh, so this is basically a difference. Uh, Mr. Mukesh asks, is there a standalone application for Blackbox One Cloud? Yeah, I told you, uh, this is Blackbox One Cloud, which is absolutely on the cloud and you have an application also hosted on cloud. Our another product, which is Blackbox Prime T or Turbo T, it is a standalone application, which is hosted on our device and that device is deployed on premise. And there is another third model where uh, you can have only the software of the black box, host it on your own hardware and uh, use the agents. So all three mod modes are there. Uh, Mr. Abhinav asks, how does black box one cloud manage load balancing? See, we, uh, our cloud infrastructure is equipped with uh, all sort of uh, load balancing, uh, uh, you know, uh, tools. So uh, when the user uh, is accessing um, the black box cloud, uh, we make sure that he has a seamless experience and the load balancing is on our part as a service provider. So let's say if you are having 100 users, whatever instance we commit for 100 users, we make sure that there is enough bandwidth and uh, enough processing and RAM and it is very agile. If we see that, uh, uh, you know, we, we have uh, WhatsApp gold and all kind of um, monitors, you know, which can immediately trigger if there is a overutilization of processing, uh, we, uh, we always scale it up so that user experience is not compromised. Uh, Mr. Vinayak asks, is there a trial version of black box cloud software available? Yes, uh, uh, trial version is there, POC is there. So one can enroll for the POC. Normally, uh, uh, you know, we, our sales team uh, takes care of all this. Uh, another question from Mr. Vikas. Will the second black box device take live data backup along with configuration settings of the primary black box system? How does how data backup of the primary devices will be done in real time or periodically? See, uh, yeah, there are two ways. What we are discussing right now is absolutely cloud. So there is no device or there is no hardware. This black box one cloud is implemented on the cloud infrastructure. It is not like for every company we are defining one different device, you know. It is uh, of instance. It is not the hardware. It is the instance. So one instance uh, takes the backup on another instance in high availability. Uh, another thing is that, uh, uh, I mean, there is a misunderstanding uh, as there are devices or there are instances. It is about primary chamber and hidden chamber. Primary chamber and hidden chamber, the backup happens from primary chamber to hidden chamber in a very specific DCDC -DC protocol. And once it happens, the hidden chamber is completely always disconnected from the network. So if there is a ransomware attack, uh, it will not be able to touch the hidden chamber. Uh, 
uh, I think that's it. Uh, remaining questions, we can answer them through the mail because of the time crunches. So sure. uh, all the participants, rest assured, your remaining questions will definitely be answered through mail. Uh, and is there anything else you want to add uh, to the meeting, Mr. Vishal? No, it was a wonderful participation. And uh, uh, I hope uh, it was interesting for all the participants. Uh, yeah, now I would like to uh, ask uh, the CEO of IT Voice Media, Mr. Tarun Tong, sir, to say a few words. Uh, so over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, that's a great session. Uh, Vishal, uh, it's a very good afternoon. It's second time we are just on again on Zoom meeting. Oh, yeah. I had just uh, listened to this time completely session because I was on into the system. And this is, uh, I say to every uh, user and the client and the persons who attend this session, this is a, one of the best solution which I see. And the solution which we are required in nowadays because the uh, the value is the not for your uh, if I say your property your gold and your now the uh, things is uh, your data data is so precious now in a days and how you protect your data and if you just protect your data that's your business is to save this is the first requirement and I had seen there's uh, uh, one uh, lots of the cases because we give the cyber security sessions and to government and the, the corporate also, they are ransomware attacks and the data thefts. This is the biggest uh, challenge into the markets. And you have, what you had done in your business in the last past, it's always uh, wash out in this uh, within a span of one minute or two minutes or, and you have to just uh, pay the money. If you are not secure your data, or not, uh, if I say ki you are not, uh, aap data ke liye agar dhyan denge, to you will just lose your business. Or this kind of the solution where you have uh, protect your customers, your data, your workers, and give your the rights. Because we can't say ki our uh, employees so fruitful for this. Because uh, Vishal said shows a file ki some person has deleted the, all the data from this drive. But the total limit they show ki within a span of one minute, we recover each and everything. So the owner is always be safe with his data, his working, and uh, the productivity of the other things. So this is the one of the good session. I again, thanks to Vishal, he, this kind of the session will always be required into the market. Some of the how, I, I can't say, he, time to time, this kind of small sessions required to uh, give more knowledge to system analysis and the CEO of the persons. Thanks, Vishal, for this session. IT yeah, thank you, thank you, IT Voice team, uh, for having me here, and uh, it was great uh, coordination, and uh, I think uh, it was a perfect execution. You know, so uh, kudos to you, IT Voice team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, all the attendees can avail their discount offer on Blackbox One Cloud by submitting their digital certificate, which will be shared to you all very shortly. Uh, thank you, Vishal, sir, and everyone, and have a great week ahead. And Vishal, sir, if you want to add anything else. Thank you very much. It was a great session and hope uh, in reciprocation, uh, our attendees also uh, felt the same. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great week ahead.